Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. Third. Okay. Hey, uh, good morning. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everyone. So oh. here's the thing. We work in a business where uh, we have microphones on mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And so David decided that two minutes to nine o'clock would be a perfect time to call his husband, <laughs> ask for pertinent information. And if you were just watching, you were just watching, you could hear David go, and so what is the password? <laughs> <laughs> we need a new password for a device we're getting it working we're getting it today so as I was walking over John uh -huh. who's our IT guy who's getting this all together yeah. he said I'm gonna need your such and such password and I said I don't know what it is yeah so we have a file at home that I've created that says passwords oh, and so so <laughs> here you go it's right here it says passwords <laughs> <laughs> so I called Gary because I thought Heather's doing the tease at like 8.55. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'm going to have a moment. I'll have a moment to, to be able to ask Gary what the password is. And now I'm hoping that Gary's answer didn't go out over the so. air. I don't think so. No, but we were all laughing. We, yes, you heard me. You like, didn't realize. So what's the password? You didn't realize that your microphone was on. And so yeah. we all heard you like, what? What is he doing over there? <laughs> at least I didn't go to the bathroom or something. That has like, happened They taught before. me that in broadcast school way back at Syracuse. They were like, if you have a live mic on, do not go to the bathroom. And here's the thing. Like, there are so many aspects of this business that there's there's just so much going on at any given time. Right. There are, there's a panel, this audio board panel that looks like it's pretend. Like, oh, my gosh. It you looks look like, it and you're like it's somebody a spaceship. Just, you just it is so that. impressive that anyone can operate this thing. All because the buttons. There's the, like it's all lit up like it's a movie set. It reminds me of a movie you've never seen before, Elf, where he just comes in and he presses all of the buttons on the elevator. <laughs> he just, I don't know. One of these will work. <laughs> but one time I did hear a toilet flush. It just, oh, really? Yeah. And Not, it happened. I mean, listen, accidents happen. <laughs> And it happened on the air. It was a long time ago. Was it me flushing the toilet? No, no. No, I don't think I've ever been caught with that. But this morning I was caught with, what's the, the password? password. The pass it's, remember that game? Do you remember the old game show Password? No. And they would like whisper to the was audience. Was it from the 60s? The, actually, it probably was. <laughs> no, David. I but they would like this. whisper, the password is, yeah. you know, bubble gum and then you had to try to get the other person yeah. to anyhow we'll play that maybe we'll play a version of it so david wrote down his new password in bright red ink which he now has and you can't do you know even where it is i put it in my pocket Good. don't lose it i'll right. remind you later all right thank you heather so, i'm glad you're here for me there's that <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> hey, everyone. So uh, we want to talk first about sort of a trend that has changed, yeah. and we wonder whether it's happening for you, too. So the Wall Street Journal did this article about uh, during COVID, restaurant reservations, if you are going out to restaurants right now, the trend has been to make the reservation earlier and earlier. And this actually, this is mind boggling to me because I eat dinner at four or five o'clock at night. Anyways, right. like if we want to go out to eat, we make dinner. As, can we get in at 430? Are you guys open for dinner? Well, that's apparently the hot time now. 430 is, is the is. new hot time. Yeah. So, uh, and, and now part of this, as we're getting towards, you know, late fall into winter, it's getting cooler at night and right. the sun is also going down. So some places are offering outdoor dining so they can keep as much capacity as possible sure. in the restaurants. It makes sense, yeah. Um, and, but people tend to want to go a little bit earlier. And the other right. theory is that people just can't wait to get out of the house. Or can't wait to go to bed. Like whatever Oh, is. maybe there's that too. Yeah. So now is like 4.30 is the new 7.30. Because that's whenever, I mean, if I would always make reservations in my head. I would always pick 7.30. And it seems to be like that used to be the most popular time because the restaurants would all say, oh, we're all booked up at 7.30, David. Yeah. Maybe 9.30 or 4.30. Well, now apparently 4.30 is hot. Well, we went out, and I can't remember if it, it was for a special occasion, and we called to make a reservation to a Pittsburgh restaurant, very fancy. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we, we don't have our first opening isn't until 930. And we go, 930? Who's eating dinner at 930? They said, well, you can come earlier if you want, sit at the bar. And you yeah. know, like, this was pretty fancy. 
sit. <laughs> you could sit at the bar and wait back, for your table. Back when there was such a thing as um, sitting at the bar, yeah. And so we went and we thought we'd get in early and we still sat down at nine o'clock. And it was still, it was fine. It was beautiful. It was still a great night, but I just couldn't. Yeah, you know what? If it's a special night, I think that's okay. Every right. once in a while, because you can do something a little out of the norm. But anyway. Apparently that's the new trend. And speaking of restaurants and outside dining, you know, as you were saying, restaurants want to sort of stretch this into cold weather as yeah. long as they can. And so these space heaters that, that restaurants use. The heat lamps. The heat lamps. Thank you. Space yes. heaters what we keep under our <laughs> space desk. Space heaters on the ground. Heat lamps are up high. So anyhow, stores are running out of these heat lamps, of these patio heaters, because all the restaurants want them. And now people are buying them. We have friends that bought one for their driveway. Just so they can hang out outside. Yeah, so they can hang out outside. Yeah. yeah, and invite people over. So some restaurants entirely sold out of these. Uh, and it's kind of like we were talking about home appliances. People are home more this year. Yeah. Things have been falling apart. You can't get a repair person, or at least couldn't over the summer. And like refrigerators, go try to find one. Is there's something about things that I don't even need running out that makes me anxious. Like, I Just don't need a right. heat lamp, but there's something about that heat lamp running out that makes me feel anxious. Like what? Like what? what I don't know. What if what's I do next? need a heat lamp? Yeah. What's, what's next? Oh, I don't I see. know. Yeah. There's just, uh, there's but you don't want to hear about it. anything running out. It's right. like the whole earlier this year, you know, toilet paper, disinfectant wipes, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, well, yesterday we were talking about how McDonald's has a new burger in the works that's entirely plant based, and Heather offered an opinion. They're calling it McPlant. I mean, I just don't, I just don't get it. That's all. I, they, they have an opportunity to come up with something so much better. I don't know what that would be, but McPlant sounds like, like I think plant, not a plant that grows outside. I think plant like a chemical plant. Like a chemical plant, which is probably not what McDonald's wants you to think. And I think the other thing too is you know that this is made in some sort of plant, like a warehouse or something. Right. It's not. They're well, not that's taking, true too. It kind of reminds you of that. Yeah. So guess what? You're not alone, Heather. Twitter has vindicated you. Thank you. There are people all over Twitter talking about this since the news broke. And so one person tweeted, McPlant is actually a bad name. <laughs> but what do you expect from the people who called their fish sandwich filet fish when quarter flounder was right there for the taking? <laughs> I do like quarter flounder. That's so I mean, that's good. That's good. All right, somebody else tweeting, McVeggie? I mean, that's a good one. That's a good uh, one. That's pretty basic and gets right to the point. McNot a burger might be one of my favorites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But maybe better than McPlant. So who knows? Maybe the McDonald's people are listening to you, Heather, and they will come up with a different name. Well, not just me, but I think the world is speaking. The Ooh. world is speaking. They want something else, McDonald's. Right. Twitter has spoken up? up. Right. Well, it's that time of year where people are starting to get excited about the holidays and gingerbread houses. We're talking about maybe making one on PTL, it's right? It's not going to happen. I think we're, all, we're oh, so close happen. to the deadline. Yeah, because they have their annual gingerbread house well, right. display. Right, but maybe we just make one for fun and we don't even enter it into the, the okay. contest. Let's do it. I'm all okay. for it. Uh, but this is a huge trend and now it's carrying over into the holidays. So we're talking about charc charcuterie shallots. I thought chalets. 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 <laughs> chalets? Like we cut onions up? No, chalets. No, let's. I, I, I don't know if you've seen charcuterie plates making the trend all over social media, but this does not surprise me at all that they've come up with this. Yeah, because I feel like in the last few years, that has become like a really big deal, like yeah. for an appetizer thing, like if you have people over. So now they're making these chalets. Uh, you know, like <laughs> gingerbread has, no. <laughs> we can call, we're going to call them shallots. Right. <laughs> They're charcuterie <laughs> shallots, <laughs> but it's savory instead of sweet. Yeah. And you know, you can put your pepperoni, your, your breadsticks, your crackers, your olives, your dried fruit. And apparently you, you seal it instead of using icing with cream cheese to hold it all together. Maybe so some fig jam. That's an idea. That's a good idea too. I love a good charcuterie plate. There you go. I think it's so much fun. I don't know if it's COVID safe. Like, you know, well, everybody's Well, if it's within your everything. family. Yeah, then you know. it's okay. So, anyway. Whatevs, it's fun. Whatevs, The yeah. charcuterie right. shallots. Something else that we, <laughs> <laughs> that we thought was fun is this guy, and I want to say he's from California, but I'm LA. not sure of that. He's from LA. Yeah. So he has come up with what may be like the best 2020 Christmas ornament toy that sort of encapsulates this whole year. Last year, it was the Port Authority bus and the sinkhole. Yes. This year, it is the dumpster fire of 2020. Right. 
Yeah, so there it is. It's an actual dumpster with fire spewing out of it. So you can get this in a toy or in an ornament. I actually, so he's selling these on Etsy. Mm -hmm. So I went on, I looked it up, I saw them there. He also is selling a toilet paper roll 20, with a 2020 on it, symbolic of the great toilet paper shortage of earlier this year. Uh, but I, I, when I was doing a quick search, there are a lot of people who are selling similar ornaments like this. Well, it's, an, it's a neat idea because people are sort of describing the year this way. It's like a, a dumpster on fire is kind of the way 2020 is going. Although, I mean, do you want to remember 2020 and have a commemorative kind of thing? I don't know. I just think it's just going to make for an interesting story. Like if I just envision myself at 85 years old sitting the grandkids down around the tree and pulling out my ornament and saying, let me tell you about this ornament. It was the dumpster fire of 2020, the great year. <laughs> it's like, say, it's Grandma, not, sweet. not again. <laughs> it's not sweet. There's nothing. No, there's uh, nothing it sweet. Funny. Yeah. It is funny. Uh, well, it's, it's hard to believe this. I find it hard to believe, but the Rubik's Cube is turning 40 years old. Have you ever been able to solve one? I don't think so. No, me neither. I, I, yeah, I remember I tried for so long, and there were kids at school that knew how, and I just could not do it, ever. Uh, but anyway, it was invented in 1980, so it's turning 40 years old. It was created by a Hungarian professor whose last name was Rubik, so that's how it came about. And it was originally designed not really as a game, like the way it took off. Oh, he was so close. But instead for architecture students. Uh, and then it became a puzzle craze, of course. And now it's become popular again during the lockdown this year. So people are posting videos and they have the hashtag cube at home. I can't stop watching it. Oh, he got it. I was so... <laughs> You were watching the whole thing, just waiting to see if he would get it or not. I didn't and he, he did. We talked do it. long enough. <laughs> wow. I don't think I could solve one of those. Oh, I couldn't. I have no idea how, how you go about brain. doing it. I mean, there's there's a trick to it, though, isn't there? Yeah. Like, because there were people who knew how to do it and could always do it. I never figured that out. I w I remember taking the stickers off. <laughs> trying to move them around because, you know. Cheat. What was a it, cheat. I I, look, I was 10, you know. Wow. Stephen <laughs> Highfield. All right. Hey, tomorrow <laughs> we are going to have our Friday free for all like we do every Friday on our PTL Facebook page. If you don't follow it yet, follow us there. We have lots of great stuff there. Uh, and you can head over there, see that graphic that we just had mm -hmm. up on the screen, submit your questions. We'll try to answer as many of them as possible tomorrow. We love Fridays and we love doing that. So yep. share as many as you can. All right. Right now we have a question for you. Are you ready to go shopping? Well, I hope so, yeah. because we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going shopping live with Mikey Hood, who's getting a jump start on the holidays by picking up gifts and decorations and a whole lot more. Look at her in a red dress there. I love it. She is at New Bowers Christmas Open House. Stay with us to see what is trending for the holiday season that's coming up. Also ahead, our man about town, Sean Collier, is here. Get his top three picks of where to go and what to do in our PTL Weekend Guide. We're talking movies, magic, and a great family freebie. Right, Sean? <laughs> we love freebies. Yes, Sean nods yes. <laughs> Plus, it's Friday Eve, as we like to say here. And Ron Smiley is here with a look at your weekend weather. So stay with us for that and much more when PTL comes right back on this Thursday, November 12th. Thank you so much for being with us.